Hey everyone, it's Mark again. I finally have a machining job to share with you. Um, as you probably figured out from the intro clips, I am making a piece for an old dental chair uh, that is now being used at a tattoo shop. So here I have this lovely 1960s or 70s styled arm. And basically what I'm making is the piece that allows this arm to go up and down and stop in the up position and the down position. And the piece was not broken, it was disassembled and lost. And parts for these are kind of scarce. If you can find the arms on eBay, they want hundreds of dollars for the arms, and I just need this little piece. So essentially what we have, this is the piece we do have, and the other end of it is basically the same thing, just a little bit longer, and as you can picture, when they come together, it would be able to turn just that much. So, I'm going to make one out of this random chunk of steel I had in my, in my junk drawer. I think what I'm going to do instead of, since I don't have a milling machine, uh, making these two little notches would be kind of tricky. I was thinking I could set it up in a drill press, drill a series of holes, and then remove the waste with file and a grinder, but I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make it flat, drill and tap two holes, and put in two cap screws. And I think that should do the trick. And if for some reason a cap screw, if the head ever breaks off, should be able to back it out, put in a new one, but unless somebody's jumping on it, I think it should hold up. So, finally, let's go to the lathe. All right, we're over here at the lathe. I've already got the metal chucked up in here. I didn't show indicating that because my my only indicator stand happens to be my camera stand. Uh, so I'm basically just gonna face it. I'm gonna have to turn it down to, I'll double check, but I think it's inch and a quarter OD. Drill in a 5 eighths inch hole, and then part it off somewhere around inch and three quarter, I think. I'd, only just looked at pictures of it but it's not really critical all it has to do is have two little bumps and fit over the piece and have a set screw so I'm just gonna get to it Alright, so I'm just going to put a hole here for a center to support it, even though this is inch and a half steel stock, only sticking out two inches, this Atlas lathe is flimsy as hell, it's like, it might as well be made out of cardboard. So I need all the help I can get, so I'm going to get a center on here just to turn this down a little bit. As you probably noticed on the facing, I was taking about, I don't even know, five thousandths passes or something. That was all I could do before it started chattering. So that's just the life of having a hundred year old Atlas lathe. So I'm going to punch that, get a center in and turn it down. I'm just using high speed steel here. I'm not fancy enough for for insert tooling. This is just an excuse to show off my Sir Tomiko one to two inch. First time I've used the this size. But I got just a bit over 
one and a quarter. It's one in 350, I need to go one in 250, so I gotta take off 100 thousandths. That's gonna be about 30 passes on this thing. Let's try 20. I have no graduations on the dials, so I have to have the indicator set up. Do another 20. Okay, I got one inch, 279. So I'll take another 10. That should get us pretty close. Okay, if I measured correctly, that should be within about five thousandths. Just do a quick little finishing pass. Okay, so the normal order of operations wouldn't be to do it this way, but this lathe, I know it well enough to know it's too flimsy to do any parting without a sender in. So I'm gonna part part of the way through while I still have the center. Then I'm going to switch out, drill through it, and hopefully it'll be close enough through that I can just finish it off with a hacksaw or something. Basically, parting on this is just painful. Um, I have it in back gears on this absolute slowest speed, and I got to go real slow, use a lot of oil, have the center nice and tight, and maybe I'll be able to make a cut without the blade exploding. Safety glasses on. I'll lock it right there and get my oil and hope for the best. All right, I'm gonna chance chamfer the edges and start punching that 5 8 inch hole after I take it out of back gears, that is. All right, I'm gonna start with a quarter inch drill and work my way up to five eighths. That is not a good grind. To the grinder. All right, let's see if that works a little better. Not as good as factory, but it'll work. All right, time for five eighths. All right, I got it in back gears again. I got the center back in, and I'm gonna see if I can part this. I might have to get out the hacksaw, but we're gonna try this.
might actually be working. Okay, now I got most of that lathe work done. I will, I already chamfered the edges. So, do burr the inside. And with any luck, there you go. So, Rather than try to cut these tabs, I think what I'm going to do is drill two holes directly across from each other, tap for 1024, and then put in these little uh, philister head or cheese head, whatever you want to call them, screws, because those heads are about the right size to match up with those. If I get something too big, I'm going to reduce the amount of movement that that arm has, but if I get something too small, I run the risk of it breaking off easily. So I'm hoping a 1024 will be a good compromise. I suppose I'll probably just do it in the drill press. I like the idea of having something a little more predictable, like the lathe, but I would have to set this up in the forejaw off-center to drill it. And I'm just not sure I have the proper measuring tools to get that dialed in correctly. So, I'm going to get some layout fluid and scribes and punches and try to get this laid out. Okay, so I'm over here at the drill press. The screws I want to use have about half inch of thread. I don't think I have a bottoming tap, so I'm just gonna go a little bit past that, so a regular tap will give me threads all the way down. So I'll just say I'm gonna go about 600 thousandths, which would be about here. And I'm gonna mark the bit so I get enough depth. This is a number 25, which is the appropriate drill to use with the 1024 tap. I'm not at all confident that my drill press table is perfectly perpendicular with the quill, but it's all I've got. There we go, two holes. All right, well I didn't do that on camera because it's not very exciting to watch, but I got that tapped and put those two screws in there. Now you can see how it works, that it will stop at those two positions and that's the armrest being down and the armrest being up. So the last part is the mounting. Originally, you would slide that over, and then you'd have a long cap screw that would go all the way through and tighten into the other side. Now that's a great design, except since I don't have the original, I don't know exactly where that hole goes. And if I get it off, even just by a couple of degrees, I'm gonna have an armrest that only comes down part way or an armrest that's tilted down and there's no adjustment. So what I've decided to do in lieu of that is to install uh, two decent sized set screws at 90 degrees so that I can set it wherever it needs to be, get it just perfect, and then crank those set screws down. And hopefully, again, if nobody's jumping on the armrest, hopefully it won't move. 
So I'm gonna mark this up, drill it, and again, that's not very exciting. You know how to probably drill a hole and tap a hole. So I will just bring it back when I'm done. All right, those last two holes are drilled and tapped. Got five sixteenth fine thread set screws in here. So I'm hoping two of those will be enough to hold it. And if not, I guess I get to make a new one. And here's how it'll be. These two rods touch, and I'll show a picture of that right now. So then this slides over there, the set screws attach it to the other rod, and there's the range of motion. Tomorrow, I will bring you back to the tattoo shop and we'll see if it works.